Okay, the regular council meeting, Monday, May 18th, 2015, will now come to order at 7 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Zambot. Present. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Kraybacher. Here. Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. All members present. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, if you have a cell phone, would you please turn it off or put it on vibrate tonight, please, so it doesn't interrupt the meeting. Thank you so much. Invocation. The Clerk of Council, Mr. Gene Collier, will now give us the invocation, please. Will you stand? Please bow your heads. <coughs> Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet as a city, to make uh, these, these big, uh, responsible decisions for the city. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with this council, that you will give them the knowledge and the patience to make responsible decisions. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with this city administration, that you would too give them knowledge and patience to make everyday decisions for this city. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for everybody in the audience. Uh, we're thankful for their participation and their interest in the city. Be with us through this meeting and, give, and thank you for the strength that you give us in our everyday lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. If you'll turn around, there's a flag in the back. We'll use that for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, now I have action on the minutes. Regular meeting, May 4th, 2015, please. So moved. Second. Motion by Kraybacher, second by Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. Reynolds. Any questions, anyone? On the minutes? Nothing? If you would, please. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Minutes past 7 0. Thank you. Communication tonight. We have a proclamation honoring the fire and EMS week. If the fire chief come back and come up here, whoever else he'd like, if you would please. We'll read the proclamation. Okay, it's a proclamation, Office of the Mayor of the City of Nicolau, Ohio, and to designate the week of May 17th through two, uh, the 23rd of 2015 as Emergency Medical Services Week, whereas Emergency Medical Services is a vital public service, and whereas the members of Emergency Medical Services teams are ready to provide life-saving care, life care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury. And whereas the Nuclear Fire Division Emergency Medical Services System consists of emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, administrators, emergency physicians, and others. And whereas the members of emergency medical service teams whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and accomplishments of the emergency medical services providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week. Now, therefore, I, Lowell McLaughlin, Mayor of the City of Nicolau, Ohio, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the week of May 17th through the 23rd, 2015, as Emer Emergency Medical Services Week. With the theme, EMS Strong, I encourage the Nicolau community to observe this week. Signed, the Mayor of the City of Nicolau, 18th of May, 2015. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, I think we have Mr. Joshua Foster of Clark State Community College here. You go up to the podium, sir, and identify yourself. Then you have five minutes for to tell us something, sir. Okay, Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here today. My name is Josh Foster, and I'm representing Clark State Community College to tell you a little bit about the college and the things that we can offer um, you and your community here. So uh, as you may or may not know, uh, Clark State Community College has three campuses uh, over different areas. We have one of our main campuses in Springfield, Ohio, uh, another one that just opened up very recently in Beaver Creek, Ohio, and then we have our Bell Fountain campus at Ohio High Point. And so uh, I'm here today just to kind of discuss the opportunities that are up there in terms of different degrees that you can get there or certifications as needed. Uh, at Clark State we have 125 different programs and or certificates that you can get there, uh, ranging from anything from business to agriculture, horticulture, um, health fields including nursing, uh, medical technician training, uh, medical assisting training, and then uh, just a whole wide variety of things. So whether you're there just to get a little bit more knowledge and a little bit of education on, on a single subject, or you're there for a, a certificate which generally takes one year, or, or an associate's degree which takes two years, uh, you'd be able to do that there at Clark State. The other nice advantage to Clark State is uh, there's a great opportunity to transfer on to other colleges and universities. Uh, a lot of our students will take two-year degrees there and transfer those on to some of the more popular schools in the area like Wright State, Ohio State, um, or University of Cincinnati, and really any other public school that's here in Ohio. They can take those credits and transfer them over there. So it's a much more reasonable way to get a lot of credit hours out of the way for either younger students or students returning into the workforce into a new and different job field. So I just want to come here today, uh, give a little information, and certainly if anyone has any questions that I field for them today that'd be great. I also have materials if anyone's interested either um, they or know somebody themselves in here or they know somebody that would like to get some information um, I'd love to be able to do that. And so that's kind of the short spiel on Clark State. Any questions? Council any questions from Council? Yes. I, I want to thank you for being here. You Really in your talk you went over some of the questions I was going to ask. I've, I've always been under uh, the, the thought that community, coll community colleges are like a, hi a hidden gem. It's a cheap way um, not cheap as in low quality, but it's, it's a frugal way for people to get a higher education. Uh, I think the way that the state structures college credits now, whenever you go to a state community college, those will transfer to any other state university. And that's correct. Right, so you can go to Cincinnati or Akron or wherever, and that class will follow you there. Um, and also, and I, I wanted to ask you about this. I know that some community colleges will talk to local businesses, um, local industry, and say, what is it you're looking for an employee, and, uh, for an employee, and then focus the curriculum or classes based on that. Do you, do you have any, um, can you say something about that, if that's the case at Clark State? Sure, yeah, we actually are developing one we just developed last year, which is our Precision Ag program, which as I was driving here through New Carlisle, I saw a lot of farming area around here. And if you don't know anything about Precision Ag, what it is is using drone technologies to survey um, big land masses, i.e. Uh, farming area. And so the example I like to give, if you have 100 acres of farmland, um, instead of fertilizing the whole thing, you take drone technologies, survey the land, and maybe you only need to fertilize 50 to 60 percent of your land. It'll save you a big savings by doing that. But then some of the other local businesses we work with, we've just started a new um, insurance associates degree. So you could spend two years with us, get uh, a degree in um, insurance management. And uh, right now it is um, one of the major, I'm trying to think what the I believe is. the insurance is about eight eight classes and you can do that all online, right? And Correct. And you can be certified to enter into the insurance selling industry. And Nationwide has guaranteed that if you go through their process, you will get an interview with them. Guaranteed okay. if you go through our program. So that's one. Uh, the other one that we've just recently come up with is a food technologies program, which you can get a certificate or an associate's degree in uh, for local companies. Like Dole's a really big one around here and they have also um, partnered up with us to make that happen. So those are kind of the three hot ones that we've started just recently to kind of meet the needs of the community and where they're at. Right. Council, uh, the, anyone else? Yep. Yes, John, please. Um, I'm, I'm a graduate of St. Clair, I'm sorry. Not but, a problem. However, I can go back to St. Clair as a senior citizen and get, and get classes for nothing, you know, for free. Does, does Clark State offer anything for senior citizens? We do. For citizens over the years of 68, 60 years old or older, 
Um, I, I believe right now our credit hours sit at right around $7.50 a credit hour. So not zero dollars, but pretty close. Um, for those that aren't senior citizens, though, our credit hours are right now $139 a credit hour, which is if you kind of look at all the other state institutions and even some of the other community colleges, we're really competitive. And I know you had mentioned the word cheap, but I consider that just a really great value on education. It's something that you can take those credits um, and go anywhere. And what I tell a lot of students is, uh, why pay the same amount for the same credit hour? At the OSUs, at Wright States, you have to take your Englishes, you have to take your mathematics classes, and you can do all those at Clark State for a fraction of the price at going with some of those bigger universities. Another thing I've, I've noticed about Clark State, they're starting to uh, skill trades, you know, the expanding that. Am I correct in that? Yeah, so we have a lot of manufacturing degrees, whether it's engineering, manufacturing, and our HVAC degrees. And then we're starting this really new program. This is actually really exciting. Uh, where you get uh, different certificates through us in the manufacturing field and then we'll kind of package those certificates together into a bachelor's degree, or not a bachelor's degree, into an associate's degree which then you can parlay that into a bachelor's degree at another institution down the road. Mm -hmm. Is that anyone else, counsel? Audience, anyone out in the audience have a question for the gentleman? Yes, sir. The, uh, that fee, is that just for part-time or is that for anybody? As far as I know, it's for any senior citizen. What about the other? What about the other? People that isn't senior citizen. It's it's $139 a credit in hour. In the state of Ohio. Okay. Right, staff, anyone on staff like have a question? <coughs> yes, one, one more person. Go ahead, sir. Uh, how well do you help uh, graduates? Uh, Jobs. Sure. We have job placement assistant programs. Uh, we also have co-ops and internships. So not only do we do it on the back end once they get a degree through us, but we'll also do it while they're there too. Because that's one of our most popular things is uh, not just taking this education and hoping that you get a job, but really taking those skills and utilizing them while they're in school. So our co-op and internship program has been really big and successful right now. And, and I would say we help people certainly on the back end after their degree but also during their degree, we will find them opportunities to work and learn as they're pursuing degrees. So it's both. We have both placements. Mr. Zambach, you have a question? Uh, yeah, I have a question regarding the senior citizens. You said $7 and a half an hour is what you charge seniors. Now, do they get, do, do, when they, do they sit for the exam and get the full course credit for that, or is that just an, a course audit fee? They will get full course credit. Uh, the only exception to that fee is that we ask that they schedule a week before classes start so that we don't uh, take some of our other students that are there potentially full time from not being able to get into those classes. So that's really the only caveat to the deal is we ask that senior citizens wait uh, till a week before classes start to register for said classes. Well, theoretically, a, sen a senior could go there and actually end up with an associate degree out of it. Yep, I actually just worked with a, a, a woman two weeks ago who's taking a full credit load towards an associate's degree and paying the, the senior citizen rate towards that. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. No problem. Thank Have you a for great being day. here. We appreciate it. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. You sure can. Yeah. Okay, before we get into the city manager's report, uh, a couple things I'd like to say. Pool passes are available at the city building, and uh, the city building's number is 845. 9492. Uh, the cemetery still has lots for sale. If people are dying to get in there, I understand. Uh, that was a joke. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was a good one. Shelter House is available for rent. I think it's fairly well booked up for now, but if you'd like it in the near future, you really should talk to the city building. The volleyball net, I noticed, is down. Are we in the process of trying to get a new one? Get a new one up, if you would, please. Yes, we are. Because I know it's used quite a bit. Uh, that would be a good thing. The last thing is the Smith Park <coughs> sign. Uh, I've seen on that uh, we've talked over on uh, Facebook about trying to do something with that. And I think Ron Wright said that he may have paint that was left over from that. Do we know that? If that's possible or not? This sign? I'm, I'm currently working with uh, Christy Smith and getting the proper paint and uh, working with them on whether we still go with the gold inlay again. And I do already have volunteers, some people that I've talked with last fall that, um, that are residents that want to help with it. It's a matter if we can fund the new gold paint inlay or go ahead and switch it to uh, just a, a regular painting. I use yellow on the other sign. 
welcome to New Carlisle, down by IGA. And I thought that popped out really well. And I've got a quart of it yet. That could work. That gold paint's not cheap. I know that for a fact. Uh, also, the two columns as we come in to the Smith Park. They need washed really bad with a power washer or whatever. Uh, would water be available from the hydrant to be able to hook that in? Because I can, I can get a power washer to be able to do that. But that's a question that I have about that. Sure. We could get a hose hooked in to yeah, the yeah, hydrant to be able to do a power washer. Yeah, as long as we open it wide open and leave it on during the duration of the power washing, yes. OK. Any questions on the Smith Park sign and so forth? Folks? So may we see some activity on that sometime real soon? We've been working on that through the winter, trying to figure out what paints don't fade and try to get it back up to the way it was originally built. So we've yeah. been working on it for some time. Reds fade really quickly, as you've noticed. Yes. Same thing over at Hensley Park. Yes, sir. If I'm not mistaken, I think there was about four council members who volunteered to help paint the sign. I think that's correct. But if we have some volunteers that are willing to do it, citizens that would come in, that would be a wonderful thing for them to be able to come in and do that. If they decide not to do it, then I would say, let's see if we can get some people to take care of it. My offer still stands. Okay. City manager's report, if you would, sir. I'm sorry, we have one thing. Yes. Before we move on, would you like me to oh, read this? Yeah. On the uh, communications, there's a line item there, open door session with member of Congress, Bainers, and congressional staff. I have this short, everybody has this. Can I read this very quickly? If you would, please. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, flyer, a memo from John Boehner's congressional, Congressman John Boehner's office. Open door session in New Carlisle. There, it'll be held second Tuesday of each month at 3 p.m. And it will be at the New Carlisle administration office. Uh, it's an open door program, gives the 8th, di 8th district residents the opportunity to meet face to face with a member of Congressman Boehner's congressional staff. We have an open dialogue about the federal government. This program also provides a local venue for residents to discuss any issues they may be facing. Also on this flyer is a contact uh, address and phone number for Mr. Boehner's Clark County office and I'm sure these are available for the public if they want to get a copy of this in the packets? Okay, very good. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Now the city manager's report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, members of the public. Uh, I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. Uh, there's no items in A to talk about action report, so I'd like to jump down to our finances that discussion with our uh, finance director. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, council, and uh, the city if we could, if you could speak up a little bit. With, the, with that running, it's very hard to hear you up here. Okay. No, or that's not doing it. Or you can scoot that microphone just a little bit closer to you. Let me do that before you do it. Because you talk so soft. Okay, I'll try and talk louder. <laughs> can everybody hear me right now? Yes. Okay. The April finance report, total revenue that we took in for the month of April was $393,000. $234.48. Total expenses for the month of April was $353.298. Let me say that one more time. $353,298.02. That's our total expenditure that we did in April. For the income tax department for April, we received in $211,377.25. Um, I can give you a, an average that was up about 3% from last year. I didn't have the exact on the report for this month. The year-to-date income tax receipts, we've received $464,512.96. Again, that's about a 3% increase from this time last year. Um, I've got the general fund um, kind of broken down again on the front. The general fund revenue for April was $216,000. $812.99, and the general fund expenditures was $100,842.87. I do have two additional um, items. That it is on the report that we did receive a police levy donation, $211.50, and that came from Mr. Lindsay's 
collection for the citizens with the uh, levy. So we want to thank him, and that started for um, our receiving. The income tax collections will start in July, so we'll keep you posted on what we start collecting from that. We also received, and I didn't have time to put it on my report, a pool donation from Mr. and Mrs. Lowry, $200. Thank you. I, I have a question before you before we open up. On the general fund, how are we faring on the general fund? I mean, that was the one that we were really hurting and we had to cut, cut, cut. What's happening with it now? The general fund, and you're going to see an ordinance that we have in tonight from the auditor's office where they ask us, this is uh, pretty routine each year, when they get their uh, more solid dollar amounts from the real estate tax money that we'll be collecting. It actually is reducing our general fund and a little bit of all the funds. Um, so the general fund, when we were estimating when we started the year at a $14,000 ending balance, we um, already are down on our real estate, homestead, rollbacks, and local government in the general fund of almost 6000 So that fourteen has gone to eight. Now, what I'll be able to get a little more accurate is with the changeover in our office, and we have two employees that were taken out of the general fund that have um, resigned. We will be replacing that with one person to, um, to help the general fund. However, in the meantime, we do have some outside source um, helpers coming in. So I won't have the figures. Also, Mr. Bridges' planning position is out of the general fund. And since he is taking that with his new manager position, we're hoping that we're going to be able to save in some areas. So right now, we're still very critical in the general fund. We're watching it very, very closely. And as soon as we get a little bit more stable with our staff, um, I should be able to project out at the next meeting a little bit better what our new projected ending balance could be. Thank you. The other question I have, you mentioned our city manager. Before, we were taking all the pay for the city manager out of the general fund. That's now being spread out over two or three other funds. Is that correct? His Are we has, doing that at this point? His has not changed yet. The finance department has. Uh, myself and the tax court, um, or, and the um, finance court board. Well, we, are, we are working on that to be able to do that. We are, however, um, all the funds were already budgeted for the whole year. Right. So you have to be careful which ones you move to, to make sure that those are available. So there will be a little bit of reprieve as we move forward with it. Okay, thank you. All Ms. right, Ms. Council, Harris, let's open it up. I'm sorry, please Ms. go ahead. Ms. Harris has devoted a lot of time and hours to in this transition for getting through uh, having our, our finance clerk uh, not be present. So right. uh, Ms. Harris has done an extremely well job, and I, I want to thank her on record right now for staying many hours extra. Um, you got to understand, like she did, there's yeah. too many moving parts at this point time to have that complete projection. Right. So it is something that she will work on in the future. She has just been just slammed with other things. I understand that and I think she's doing a great job. I just wanted to bring that up to everyone's attention out here that she is working very diligently to try and keep the general fund up and running and we do have plans on moving things around to be able to help it even more. Now, council, any questions with council, please? Anyone? Anyone in the, I'm sorry, yes. Did you have your hand up? Oh, I just raised it just now. All right. Yes, sir. Mr. Um, I, I, as, as with, uh, with Randy, I want to thank you for all the time you put into that, put into the budget, and also over the past few months you've been really going in there with a scalpel and trying to find ways to, to cut and, and uh, have a more healthier budget. So thank you for that. Um, something that came up uh, a few meetings ago, there was a, I guess, a phone booth. That, that we pay so much money a month for, and I know there was going to be a discussion of that. Was there a resolution to whether we're going to continue with the booth or not, or pay phone and not a booth, but a pay phone? I have got the data completely used from the inception back in 2012 or 2011, um, and I have looked through the data. Uh, I am going to recommend the contract be uh, avoided. Uh, it is not there yet. When you look at the usage, it was pretty heavy in 2012 or 2013, kind of declines in 2014. I know there's a concern, you know, if somebody's there that doesn't have a cell phone emergency situation come up. You know, there's another thing I want to look at. There's a pay phone at Panda Dollar that we want to see is active. Um, so we want to make sure that our citizens who are at the skateboard feel safe, but at the same time, we got to weigh their cost and the analysis. At $75 a month, we do that by 12, that's about 900 something bucks a year. 
that could, you know, pad us a little bit more. So it's a cost benefit analysis. Um, I, if I had to say it right now, I would recommend it being cut. I just still got a few more pieces to look at. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Any other questions for the finance board? Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Uh, moving on with our service uh, discussion, uh, our service director, Mr. Pico. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Uh, I just have a few updates. The normal spring hydrant water main flushing that we do, uh, usually twice a year, we are holding off. Uh, we are quite busy with the pool, and we've had a lot of main breaks and service repairs. Uh, with some other franchises like Fishel in the area, we've been having to do a little extra work. So we're going to postpone that until sometime in the summer uh, to go through and start flushing. Uh, we had, last Friday we repaired four main breaks uh, located on Main Street and Jefferson. Uh, we did not get as far as we wanted to, uh, so we still have about three or four to go. We are actively, uh, or we're going to try and get those repaired as soon as possible. It's just a uh, manpower issue right now and trying to keep up with those. Uh, we do already have POs open for the asphalt. So uh, the other thing will be uh, we've been trying to keep up with the cemetery and come for Memorial Day this weekend in the walk. Um, we have basically crews from other departments um, that will probably be helping out to try and get it we needed uh, to finish up the cemetery for the Memorial Day. And that is all I have right now. And I can entertain any questions on any other topics also. Council, questions? Mr. Graybach. Is the pool ready? Uh, the pool's pumping right now. We had some major leaks uh, that we didn't anticipate this year. Uh, we just dug up a lot of concrete down there. We got it fixed. It's pumping currently. We haven't found anything um, as of right now. We have the middle school, I think it is, coming Wednesday. If we can get our inspection passed uh, tomorrow afternoon, but we're waiting on a call back from the county. Do we know what, what the pool rates are? I don't, I don't have them in front of me, but they've been pull rate, you said pull rates. Yeah. They've been published on the different social media. We have had them at the, um, the article from Valerie has been sent to the newspaper to put it in the paper. Um, and we also have it up at the city building. And then also our cashier has called everyone who has passes in uh, prior, has called each and every one of those who've had passes or swim lessons to say, hey, they're here, we got them. And, and so forth. So we're we're you definitely using different avenues to try and get the word out. Mm -hmm. um, something about streets. Uh, um, the, you took a ride around town with with an engineer and talked something about the streets. Uh, we're looking at a, a couple streets to work on with the street level. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, one question I wanted to ask is um, we uh, voted on a study on the that one street that was a big curve. Yes. What happened with that? I got it. It's completed. I'm reviewing it just to make sure that the, um, the, the standards, I'm working with him on the uniform uh, code for that. And I think we'll be putting up, uh, I think there's six signs that uh, possibly will be added. We're just, we're just trying to make sure that I'm clear of what he's uh, asking me to put up. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have four raise if you'd like to know those. Could you speak up a little bit? I think people are having trouble hearing you, if you would. Just I have the pool pass if you want the info. Please. Sure. sure. Uh, students, $5 for daily, for daily rates. Students are $5. Seniors are $5, 65 and up. Adults, 18 and up, are $6. So students are aged from 5 to 17. A one-year season pass, a student is $100 for ages 5 to 17. A senior one-year pass is $100. An adult 18 and up is $125. For a family of four, it's $200, and that's $10 each for additional family members over four. Grand grandparents can be added to a family pass for just $50 each per year. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions for the service director? I have one for you. They're tearing up the street, 235 in front of the old CVS. you have any idea or can you? Let us know why. That's uh, official doing contracting work for Vectra and they're uh, redoing a gas line. Okay. Thank you. Had a lot of questions on that. Anyone else? Anything? Yes, sir. How much did it cost to do the repairs to the pool? <clears throat> Where we haven't got finalized, but I know we uh, appropriated 5000 for the initial startup. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Anything? 
Okay. Uh, moving on with the planning and zoning discussion, uh, uh, since I am now also the city planner, I'll talk about that. Um, there is no activity report for this month. I do apologize. Time just wasn't on my side for that one. Um, I will do another one for next month at the next council meeting. Uh, communications is that we do new, uh, now have a part-time code enforcement officer. His name is Jim Clark. He was with the city before I started as a planning director. He actually trained me on code enforcement. He's extremely knowledgeable of the Sierra Property Maintenance Code in the city. So if you see him driving around in a black car, just give him a wave and uh, say hi to him. That's all for the planning and zoning. So thank you. On, thank you, sir. On to the fire discussion. Let's see if any questions, if you would, sure. Mr. Manager. Any questions from the city manager on planning and so forth? There are none. If you would, sir. Sure. And moving on with our fire discussion, uh, Chief Phillips. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mr. Mayor, members of council, citizens, and guests. The New Girl Isle Fire Division responded to a combined total of 94 calls for service during the month of April 2015. Fire responses totaled 16 with an average response time of 5 minutes 44 seconds. The division responded to 78 medical calls for service with an average response time of 5 minutes 16 seconds. Elizabeth Township Statistics, Elizabeth Township Fire and EMS responded to a combined total of 13 calls for service during the month of April 2015. Fire responses totaled one, and emergency medical responses totaled 12. Sorry, there's an error there. Um, there were nine responses to Elizabeth Township, one to the village of Castown, one response to the city of New Carlisle, one response to the city of Tip City, and one to Pike Township. Uh, significant event, uh, the only thing last month, and uh, it was a structure fire at 1201 Hemlock. Uh, we got a, an overwhelming amount of support on that one from Bethel, Miami, Bethel, Clark, Wright, Patterson, Enon, Mad River, Elizabeth Township, and Pike Township. Uh, that was a wind-driven fire, and unfortunately, the house was a total loss. Uh, some training items, fire training offered for April was 12 hours. The EMS training offered for April was four hours. Fire training offered so far for 2015 is 42 hours. EMS training offered so far 36 hours. Uh, some outreach items, we did a CPR class at the New Carlisle Methodist Church. We did a, a second CPR research class at the Elizabeth Township Community Center. Uh, we did a fire safety uh, special needs. For special needs students, we reached uh, way out there at the Riverside Elementary up in DeGraff, the local fire department there uh, refused to do the class for those students, so we took over and did it for them. Uh, and we also did a mock crash at the Miami East High School for the Prom Promise campaign. Our Elizabeth Township crews uh, participated in that. Project updates, uh, gear, we're still waiting for the turnout gear. I spoke to our rep the other day. It's getting the, the manufacturing process finalized and it should be getting to us pretty soon. Uh, some equipment items, Medic uh, 52, got a whole new set of rear airbags. Medic 52-2, uh, we loaned that out to Pike Township for a little while while their medic was getting repaired. They only have one ambulance up there, so that's something uh, we do on occasion. We loan it out to them. Uh, if they're, they get in dire straits, they need an ambulance to use up there. Uh, some buildings and ground stuff. The apron is complete. I think everybody's seen that so far. It turned out really well. We're really happy with it. Uh, there was a donation of seven uh, televisions by Captain Jen and Dan Bowman. Televisions are mounted in several locations in the firehouse, and uh, we're just waiting for electric to be run to them. Uh, and our station painting project continues. Uh, we have a few odds and ends there that we need to finish up, but we're working on that. Uh, my safety message this time would be, uh, please be aware of uh, motorcycles where you're out driving, and also be aware uh, of farm machinery while traveling around the area. Uh, as mentioned earlier, there's a lot of farm ground around here, and those machinery's moving in and out, so be careful when you're doing that. That's all I have, and I'll entertain any questions. Council, any questions for the fire chief? Anyone? Yes, sir. City manager has a question or okay. comment? Uh, Mr. Phillips, do you want to discuss the communications? Oh, yes. I have uh, one communication. Uh, I was going to introduce uh, two employees tonight, uh, but uh, the other one didn't show, but I'll mention him anyway. Tony has since worked through the Stable House State Fire Level 1 fire.
Also, 24 reports or 23 reports uh, taken by county deputies, and we had a total of 47 reports for the city. Miles patrolled was 1,076. Miscellaneous calls we had 56, and follow-up investigations there were four. Under traffic stops, we had 35 with 35 citations issued. OVI arrests there were six, and there were nine charges. Driving under suspension we had 17. Parking citations, none. Abandoned vehicle tows, none. Non-injury accidents, none. And injury accidents, none. Under arrest information, criminal adult arrest, there were 11. Criminal adult charges, there was 23. Out of those 11, uh, we had no criminal juvenile arrest or charges. Uh, we did have four warrant arrests, and we did not file any warrants last year. For special interest, assaults we had zero, breaking and entering there were five, thefts we had 16, vandalism one, 911 hangouts we had four, phone harassments none, domestic violence with an assault we had none, domestic violence just verbal we had none, lockouts none, peace officer we had one, alarms there were three, and assist there were three. I just want to send out a message, thank the people of New Isle who showed up to vote and did take the time to support the police department in the city of New Carlisle. We all thank you very much. That was, that's what we needed. That's a, that's a step in the right direction. Uh, with that, uh, I forgot to put in that uh, crime is up about 48%, a little over 48% as of right now. And I'm not going to read the, stati the stati stat statistics, if I can say it, <laughs> on, the, on the back page. There's quite a few there. Those are generated by a person the sheriff has uh, assigned. She's an intern from Wittenberg University, and she's tar starting to take uh, another direction with her stats to be more helpful to us and we'll know what's going on. So those are available uh, if anyone wants to take a look at it. With that, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Council, questions for Sergeant? Let's go with Mr. Lowry first, please. Yes, yeah, Sergeant Underwood. Uh, I just had a quick question. It was brought to me, and I thought it was a good question. And to be honest, I had never thought of this question. What, where are the two uh, cruisers that were being used with the two deputies that were let go when we did the budget cut? Are those Mr. Kitko, you know, Mr. Kitko helps with the cruisers. Uh, they're out of service currently. Um, I believe is one of them functional or both of them out of service? One of them is partially functional. The one that I think everybody's talking about, they can see down in our wastewater treatment plant. That one has uh, the engine's almost blown or pretty much is blown. The other one that sits up is an operational vehicle, but I think it's going to need some minor uh, maintenance when we get it back out of the road. 
Are they both the chart the uh, Dodges? No, one is a 2007 Impala, and the other one is a, I think, a 2010 Charger. Okay. Which one has the blown motor? Uh, the Impala. Impala. Okay. But the other one is in probably the city it, it garage? Substation garage. That's what I was thinking. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, the Crime Watch uh, meeting that we had the other night, several things came out of that. One of them was community policing. And I, I asked about community policing quite a bit, uh, getting the guys out of the cars, basically. I noticed on, in Dayton uh, today that that on Channel 7, they were, they were talking about Dayton doing community policing back to the bicycles. <coughs> we used to have bicycles several years ago. You know, and I liked it. You know, I think people and, and Fader was talking about being more miserable. You know, um, and that, that's what more police would do, not necessarily deter, would deter some of the crime if they see the, see the sheriff. Is there any thought about going back to that type of uh, policing, community policing? I would love to go back to that. Um, I was a part of the COPS program, Community Oriented Policing, when it first came out. And it's a great program, it's effective, it works, and there's a lot of prevention there. Unfortunately, with what we have up here now, the two guys that we have, uh, we, don't, we will not be able to do uh, that type of policing until we get more people. And what is more? Two more, four, three more, four more? I'm not saying it can't be done with four, but we're still short on hours with four deputies. And we have worked with that so long, we are uh, adapted to just having four deputies. When, uh, if you want to cover all the hours, you need five. And you really need to cover 24-7 before we start talking about community policing. Um, there's also something else about the Department of Justice, or at least Mike DeWine's um, office, talking about 40 hours of training. Is uh, Kelly going to develop that, or? That, that I'm sorry, I didn't that, hear the first part of your question. Mike DeWine is saying that instead of this few hours of training for the deputies, that they're recommending 40 hours of training for the deputies. Yeah, any you training heard any more about that? Or? Uh, any training that we are state mandated to take, uh, we we are required through the sheriff's office to take that training. We have been taking uh, certain training that's mandated. Uh, this year, uh, we're able to get online and do most of the some of the training. I shouldn't say most of it, uh, but also uh, there's the requalifications and the taser, the shotguns, uh, the rifles. Uh, that's all taken care of through the sheriff's office. And that's at no cost for new block. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. McElroy. Uh With everything going on and in the news, I have to ask, body cameras, are they coming? Are they going to be mandated? Um, are the department going to get them? And if so, are there grants or programs to, to pay for that? Or do you, do you have any information at all? The sheriff has ordered body cameras, but there's so many agencies wanting them right now. Um, Naturally, they're behind on production. So at the soonest possibility, we will have body cameras. I have no idea what the policy and procedure will be yet. Uh, although we are making plans uh, to put a computer, which is furnished by the sheriff's office, in the substation to keep track of the videos. On your question. Are, are the body cameras replacing the dash cameras, or is there instances where they're using both? Well, I, I honestly feel we need dash cameras. Uh, I mean, I, I haven't seen how these body cameras work. Body cameras are good. Uh, I don't know how effective they will be uh, when they're in a patrol car. And I don't know the time period if it can back up. A lot of times, well, almost always, I should say. Any uh, in-car camera has the capability of backing footage up. So I might witness someone run a red light, but I don't really uh, start the tape until I see them run the red light. Well, they're through the light by then. 
So I don't have any evidence. Those cameras in the car are set up to back up, uh, I think, any place from several seconds, and I think the max is like a minute. Well, actually back up and start recording that incident, and you will have the person running the traffic light on camera. I'm not sure the body cameras have that capability. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Reynolds. How many uh, dash cams do we have in our cars? Do we, is each of our cars retrofitted with one, or? We have no dash cameras I, at I all. I don't think so. Thank you. Anyone else, Council? Yes. Is, I talked to you before about the dash cams. Is there something in progress in the Sheriff's Office right now to get dash cams? Yes, there is. There will be a new type of dash cam at the Sheriff's Office. Um, and they're expensive. They're not cheap. Um, these dash cams are new. Instead of trying to compile all the data, this new computer that we're going to have at the substation, when you get within a certain range of it, of the substation, you can just drive by the substation out front, and the information that's on that patrol car will be downloaded to that computer. So only sergeants will have access to that computer to be able to um, go through the information that's on the computer. That'll be done the same with body cams, if I, if I understand correctly. Okay, if they're in the process of getting them, would that include New Carlisle deputies or is New Carlisle to get their own dash cams? The dash cameras or body cameras? Dash. Dash. <laughs> we would have to provide the dash cameras, and they're roughly five grand a piece. Okay. Do you feel that that's a priority? I feel they're infallible in court. The evidence is right there. If someone accuses an officer uh, of doing something they shouldn't be doing, it's right there. Or maybe the body cam may not be. When they activate their overhead lights, that camera automatically comes on. Uh, the body camera, you, and I haven't seen much on it, but if I'm right, the body camera, you have to manually push it. Because you just don't want eight hours continuous video. So you would have an option on the body camera. Okay. In a patrol car, you may not have that option. Is this something we can look at down the road when the money from the levy starts coming in? Anyone else? It wasn't done. I'm sorry, yes. Uh, when you say we would be responsible, can you further clarify that? Is it we the city or we the sheriff's department would have to supply the dash, the dash can in the car? Okay, um, and I apologize for that. The dash cams would be the responsibility of the city of New Carlisle. Okay. The body cameras, uh, as I know of right now, and it, it's a possibility it could change, but they're going to let the New Carlisle units have the body cameras. Okay. Randy, could we look into grants or something, or when the money from the levy comes in, and look at this and see if we can get them as soon as possible? Absolutely. Thank you. One of the things with the grants is normally if there's a grant available, uh, the salespeople will let us know of the grant because they want to sell uh, cameras and they're very good at getting information to us when they're available. So it might save you a little bit of time. Thank you, Sergeant. Our law director would like to say something, please. Mayor, the best practice is to have both the dash camera and the body camera. Thank you. Appreciate that. What you said. City manager, yes. Sir, the, the uh, grant application that I have in front of me from that was sent to you by uh, sent to you for Sergeant uh, I mean Sheriff Kelly. Uh, the 137 page application does that cover equipment or just an animal? Because I haven't read the whole document. You know, I'll talk I believe there's some equipment in there. I'm not sure it provides a patrol car. So it, and I'm thinking back to the late 90s. In the late 90s, there was some equipment available, but it's how the grant is written. And it's like 139 pages. And we have at least two school districts in the county researching the grant for officers uh, for their school districts also. So we have people applying for those. Anyone else? Uh, 
Yes, sir. Can I make a comment regarding the question Mr. Craybacher had about the community policing? Yes. Uh, it just triggered some memories of mine. Uh, I was on council when we did have the uh, officers on the bikes. And I know it was during the time period, I think it was, Sergeant, when uh, we had the COPS program going on, and we had an extra officer at times. And they would pick certain shifts. And it's, I know what we talked about all the time, and what was important was any time that officer was on a bike, there had to be an officer in the area that was being considered backup. So they're always, at that point in time, there had to be two officers on that shift. And so we, their city was only able to do that maybe two or three shifts a week, and they might pick weekends. I know it was real successful with catching kids doing things in the parks they weren't supposed to do, and they could slide up on people, ride right up on you in the communities. It was very successful, but you always would have to have another officer on duty at that same time, which made it difficult at times. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, sir. Just to add on to that, uh, Ron Fader said um, that in the crime watch, and I said that so the trouble that we had with that here is that the radio did not work everywhere in New Carlisle. No. You know, that, was, that was the trouble with that at, at that time. Well, hopefully in this day and age, the radios are He said it's probably like 95%, <laughs> <laughs> so not 100%. Anyone else? Any questions, comments? I have a simple comment. I actually have a meeting with Mr. Cobb tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I think we'll go over a little bit more in detail of uh, the COPS program. With you, is that what we're doing tomorrow? The cops program. Yeah, oh, okay. CEO protecting. Sure, control. and I will report back to council. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Sergeant. Appreciate your report. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, moving on. Uh, other informational items. Uh, first one is the Mark April Clark County Combined Health District stats are attached in the packet, so please take a moment to look over those. The second informational item is we have a Memorial Day walk on May 23rd, 2015. We will meet at 1130 uh, up at Howard's IGA. And about noon, we'll start walking down Main Street to the cemetery. There will be a short ceremony then. Uh, after the ceremony is done, uh, you can just walk back to your car or get a ride back up to Howard's IGA, however you choose to do it. But please come and join us and uh, observe the Memorial Day. One question. Sure. Are the Eagles doing a meal again this year? As you usually do. Uh, I do know there's food there, but unfortunately, sir, I don't know who's doing it. It's so the I'm Eagles, which is back behind uh, the old YMCA's where they're located on Quick Road. Sergeant, do you know if the sheriff is probably accepting money again from them? Do you have any idea on that this year? Sir, I do not know that. Because every year that I've gone, that's what's happened. But there should be a meal <laughs> after that if people would like to go. We've, we've done it in the past, yes. I did have something to say about it. That it is happening at the Eagles. Okay. So it is happening at the Eagles. Food afterwards. And it's open to the public. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I do believe that is all I have for the city manager report. Okay. <clears throat> We're now at comments from members of the public. Do we have someone that would like to speak tonight? Would you go up to the podium, please? Identify yourself. I'm Phil Baker. I've been associated with our fire department since day one, since my father was fire chief when I was born. Uh, the volunteers then were businessmen, three runs a month. They shut up their business, they go. It's altogether different now. This is why we appreciate people like Tony. Uh, nowadays, the couples, the families, husband and wife, whatever, is working one, two, three jobs. They don't have time for volunteer. They have to spend time with their family. And Tony has her other one. We hope that doesn't happen to him, but it may. But we appreciate our volunteers, uh, especially our new ones coming on. One other thing I'd like to mention, our squad made a run last week, and the lady involved was telling me about this. Uh, Jerry, our newest part-time member, happened to be on... Um, learning the uh, orientation that day, so he was kind of an extra, and they had a lady face down. They went and they picked her up. They said, why, how'd you get in this position? She was pulling flowers, pulling weeds out of the flower bed. So while they're assessing her, some members of our crew finished pulling her weeds. And I think that's what kind of department we have here, and we appreciate um, little things like that. 
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to speak? If you would, go up to the podium, please. Anyone? All right. Yes, please. Go ahead and identify yourself. Jennifer Bowman, New Carlisle Fire Division. I just would like to invite everybody tomorrow night to the um, EMS open house at the firehouse. Six o'clock, we're going to have a free CPR class through the American Heart Association Friends and Family class. Um, we do offer a free CPR class about once a month. Um, we'll come out to you. But I welcome everybody to come to the open house tomorrow night, meet all of our people, um, see our equipment, and see what we're all about. Jennifer, Thank did you. you say six o'clock? Six o'clock is when the CPR class starts. The open house starts at seven. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Can I just thank you for the donation of the televisions? That was very kind of you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Okay, we'll continue on then. Committee reports. Any committee reports this evening? None this evening, sir. Resolutions are not. Ordinances, would you like to go ahead, sir, with the ordinances? Yes, Mayor. Ordinance 15-19E, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending the estimated resources of the city of New Carlisle that will be available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2015, in declaring an emergency. Council? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Zim. We adopt ordinance 15-19E. Second. Could we get an explanation on that real quick, if you would? Sure. Uh, just a quick explanation. Uh, every year, it's pretty routine. Mrs. Harris uh, uh, briefly uh, touched on this earlier. Uh, every year, the auditor's office sends us back for a reduction in the homestead real estate, which ultimately affects the bottom line that we appropriated. So out of the 14000 we got to redo. Uh, we can just say that's about $4,000 off of Harris, 4800 The total for the general fund will be almost 6000 uh, We'll 6, be down to 8 Estimated Thank you. Any questions, Council? Yes, Mr. Rex. So this is an overall decrease, correct? Just looking through this. Pardon? This is an overall decrease of money. Yes. Uh, across our, the whole, uh, all the funds, it's about fifty-six hundred. There are a little couple of them went up, and and it'll show on your report. Now, last year, um, it was down thirty-four thousand total with all the funds. So this was a very small decrease. So what is our surplus now that we have the numbers here? Pardon? What's the surplus we have left over from the budget? Just for the general fund? Yes. We're, we're going to be down to um, about an 8,000 ending balance. Double but I will get a little bit more accurate numbers next month when we get the other pieces. <clears throat> That'll be adjusted as we go along. Is that correct? correct? Thank you. Appreciate that. Anyone else? Any questions? Would you call for the vote, please? Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Ordinance 1519E passes 7 to 0. Good. Ordinance 15. When you're ready, sorry. Ordinance 15 20, introduction tonight, public and hearing in action on 6115. An ordinance authorizing an addendum to, the, to clarify certain provisions of the client service agreement with MediCount Management Incorporated, formerly known as MBI Solutions. Ordinance 15 21, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on 6115. An ordinance authorizing an addendum to clarify certain provisions of the client service agreement with MediCount Management Incorporated, formerly known as MBI Solutions. Ordinance 15 22, introduction tonight, public hearing and action 6115. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of a new backhoe in conjunction with the Ohio Cooperative Purchasing Act. That's all I have there. If you would go ahead. Uh, well, let's go to other business first. Is there other business, Council? Any, anyone have anything? Other business? 
Yes, Mr. McIntyre. Uh, Mr. Bridge, question for you. Um, a couple weeks ago, I talked, I brought up briefly about the um, a program that the Ohio Treasurer's Office has where we can put our budget online and people can go through and search it. I believe it was free to use. Um, I've got the form here for more information. If, if I get this to you at the end of the meeting, could you look into I know you're busy, but sure. if you have a chance, look into it and how we could go about doing that. Is this from Josh Mandel? It is from Josh okay. Mandel. Yeah, it's, I guess it's a new program that he's starting up for more transparency. And over the past month or so, we've had a lot of questions about the budget. I think it'll help out to tell people, okay, well, I can talk you through it. Just get online and we can look at the same thing. Um, sure. So it's yeah. worth a shot. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. No Anyone else? Any other business? Yes. Bill, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, I know you brought that up a couple of weeks ago, I think, and I think that's a really good idea. So thanks for bringing that up. Anything else? Anyone else? Audience, anyone? Other business? Any comments? Yes, sir. People talk about some TVs being donated from the fire department, and we have a lot of those electric trucks to them. Who's paying for that electric from the city or the fire department? Fire department. Comes out of the fire department budget. So I hope this council shoots that extra expense down. We don't need seven more TVs at the fire department. Come on. How much does electric serve? How much does it cost to collect a contract for the electric? Boss. That I don't know. Yes, sir. Sir, can you go to the podium and introduce yourself? I don't, I don't know who you are. Can I make record of it? My name is Paul Shacker. I do live outside the city limits, but my mother still lives here in town. Uh, fire department got seven TVs donated. Now they're waiting on electric to be run to hook those seven TVs up. That's a lot of TVs. I, I, That's a big expense to have an electric contractor come in and do that. And this is a clear assumption. I'm just assuming we're talking extension boards. Uh, am I correct in that assumption? I, you would have a TV up, and we're not looking to run conduit. We have a few outlets that need to put it in. We have a outlets that need to put it in. We have a certified contractor to do that. Okay. Well, what does that cost? Uh, his estimate was over 600 bucks, I think. There's another $600 savings. Also, uh, I want to thank the city also for giving me a phone call, letting me know the pool passes are on sale. Being a past member and can. I will continue to support the pool. I really didn't know swimming season was coming. That's a joke, but still. I'd like to know who maintains the bike path. We do our service department, public works department. That takes a lot of time, doesn't it? Um, through the summer, we'll blow it off once a week. Uh, we use community service usually for trash, and then mowing is usually once a week, two twice. So. Break it down hours, I don't have it right with me, but uh, I would say a lot of time, but it depends on the season. During the winter months with the snow and that, a lot of times you've seen that pipe, bike path nice and clean. You've seen city streets not even plowed. And you know why? Nope. Uh, it, it was the last thing we ever get done. Streets were always first. But as long as no one drives on it, the plow will scrape that asphalt clean. By the time we get a blade on a regular city street, people have already snow packed it. And we don't lay any salt down on the bike path either. Okay. I just think that time they're out there plowing that, that could be replowing the streets. Yeah, every street is plowed at least twice or curb to curb before the bike path is ever touched. Every time. Okay. Guaranteed. Well, all right. Thank you, Mr. Jackrow, for your comments. Appreciate it. You had a comment? Yeah, on the pool, I also just wanted to thank, I don't know if, if you just forgot, I didn't see it. There was also a donation from. Uh, one of the past city managers, Bob Bender, he made a donation to the New Carlisle Pool. Uh, and also Dave Trimmer, uh, Edward Jones, is going to be sending in a check to make a donation to the pool. So I wanted to thank him as well. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other comments? Audience? Any other business? Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. We'll continue on here. Uh, would you like to... <clears throat> Mr. Collier, would you go ahead and read the rest, please? City offices closed. So In well. other business, the city offices will be closed uh, Memorial Day, uh, next Monday, May 25th. 
will be a joint government meeting Monday, June 29th at 6.30 p.m. and that will be hosted by uh, New Carroll City Council here at Smith Park Shelter House and that is open to the public. If I may interrupt, the food is going to be provided and paid for by the county commissioners for this meeting. Just to let everyone know that. Really? Are we having ribs? They have <laughs> volunteered to do that, have they not, Mr. City Manager? They have. Yeah. Thank you. Rudy's? I'm sorry, go ahead. And news about our the next Crime Watch meeting, uh, it will be uh, June, is that a Wednesday? Second Wednesday of the month. It's a Wednesday, Wednesday, right. Wednesday, June the 10th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. And that's all I have under other business, Mayor. Okay, I'm going to read about the executive session, and I'd like you to read the emergency ordinance that's after it, if you would, please. Uh, executive session to con conference with an attorney for the public body, the law director, concerning disputes involving the public body that are believed to be in good faith the subject of pending or intimate court action. As a courtesy to the audience, the presiding officer should announce if any additional business is anticipated after the executive session if an executive session is to be held and we are holding one and we do anticipate other business being held we'll go back into uh, regular session after the executive session uh, we do have to clear the place for the executive session but then you're welcome back after that now if you would please read the ordinance that we have please the ordinance is ordinance 15-23e public hearing and action tonight an ordinance employing impartial outside investigators to conduct an internal affairs investigation into fire department operations and authorizing the city manager to sign a contract to hire to hire and declare an emergency. And this ordinance will be reread after the executive session, so we can have a motion in a second. And for, for clarification, that is the additional regular business that council will be taking up, and it's my understanding that's the only additional regular business that council after will be taking up. After the executive after session. The executive Thank you. Sorry, can't hear. Appreciate it. That is the only additional regular business that council anticipates taking up after the executive session. So as a courtesy to the public, we wanted to make that clear. <clears throat> so we will now go into executive session. We need to have a vote for that. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. We need a motion. May I have a motion, please, to go into executive so session? Moved. Second. Give me two seconds. I've lost my Chief. Here it is. The motion was made by Mr. Lowry. Seconded by Mr. or Mr. McIntyre. Second. I love it. Mr. Zanbach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craver? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Passes 7 to 0 to 5. They let everybody know on a uh, emergency ordinance, it takes six votes to pass an emergency ordinance. Let everyone know that. So we are, we will now go into emergency, I mean, I'm sorry, an executive session. So we have an audience again. <laughs> if you would reread the ordinance now that we've been discussing in the executive session. Ordinance 15 20. 3E, public hearing and action tonight, an ordinance employing impartial outside investigators to in conduct an internal affairs investigation into fire department operations and authorizing the city manager to sign a contract to hire in declaring an emergency. Council. Mr. Mayor. Motion. Move we adopt ordinance 15-23E. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Lowry this time. Discussion. Yes, sir, Mr. McIntyre. Um, yeah, in discussions with some of uh, some residents of town um, regarding the potential for there to be an investigation, I think some people really wanted uh, 
a, a committee made up of local people from town who understand how fire departments work or understand the intricacies of things like this and they would come together and look at that. And, and I respect that and I know that there's a lot of good people who, who could do a really good job. It's just that when you have these sorts of things, I mean everything that I do, I'm really, I'm very much want to watch out for the appearance of impropriety or the appearance that there's some sort of conflict of interest going on. And because this letter was anonymous, I can't say for certain whether or not the people who may make up this committee are somehow connected with the um, uh, parties involved in the investigation or that they're somehow related to them or that there's a good old boys network. Not that I think that there would be, not that I think that there is. But I don't like the appearance of that because any result that comes out of something that we do internally um, will be tainted by the court of public opinion and that is a very rotten apple that will spoil a bunch and so based on that I really like the idea of going to an outside source not, connect, not connected with the city that understands the interest of, of what this case is about, what the situation is about and they can come in an, in an impartial way, look at that and then come back with whatever recommendations or results that they have um, in which case we can both tell our citizens and also to the different communities which we have contractual liabilities, the townships, that we put a full faith effort into this. There is not any appearance of bias and based on the findings we can move forward from there. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Council. Anyone else like to speak? Yes. Mr. Lowry. Please bear with me. I'm not the greatest speaker there is and I get mumbled and jumbled sometimes. First of all, I don't think we should have this investigation. I've talked to Randy, I've talked to law director, and I respect both of them totally. Because somebody, whoever in the fire department was unhappy and decided to stir some rumors. I don't think they can hear you in the back if you can speak up a little bit. I'm sorry, is that right? No, that's just helping with that back there. But apparently some people in the fire department decided that they was unhappy, they didn't like the chief or whatever, and they decided to write a letter, if it even came from the fire department, which I'm not sure it did come from any the fire department. Uh, there was outside sources who fueled this fire. I think there was four of them. I won't go into details right now. I may later, and may even name names, I don't know. I have to check. But there's outsiders that wasn't even in the fire department that fueled some of this, and I firmly believe that. Um, once again, spoke to Lynette. I think New Carlisle has an awesome fire department. They have for years. Chief, I know I questioned you. I got chewed out about it. I got caught up in what someone had told me, called me on the phone and called me down. Let's talk about this. This is going on. That's going on. They flat out lied to me, okay? And I'll correct that my own self when the time comes, okay? And I was hoping at that time that I would hear some different answers, but at any rate. So now, because these people like to see their names in the newspapers, they like to get uh, notoriety or whatnot, we are gonna have to spend a lot of money to have this investigated. And as I said, had there ever been Problems in the fire department, absolutely. And I hope I offend none of you people sitting back there. I once belonged to the fire department. Fire department people have some terrific big egos. They always have, they always will. Military has them, police have them, okay? But that, that doesn't mean that's not a bad thing. You know, and, and once again, I, I know I'm rambling a little bit. I'm totally upset with having to spend this money. And, but I want you guys to know I'm behind you 100%. Was I upset at one time? Absolutely. I was because I believed something that I shouldn't have believed. And I believe as of right now that we do not need an investigation. I'm sorry that I have to disagree with you and you, but I don't think we need to. We talked about it in the meeting, and I think it will all come out. And the cream always rises to the top, and the dregs stay at the bottom of the barrel, and that's where they belong, okay? Guys, I apologize to you for everyone here that you guys are doing this. I really do. It shouldn't happen. And there's other people responsible for it, and hopefully someday they will have to answer. Okay? 
I want to vote no on this one. It's so bad that because of the safety of the citizens of this community, I can't do that. But I want to. But if it comes to safety, I can't. Anyone else? Council? Okay, I would like to put my two cents worth in. Uh, it is definitely a safety issue. It's a safety issue for the department, everybody in the department, this letter and the things that come to pass and also what the chief's going through at the moment with the state. Uh, the situation is it's a safety issue for the department and it's a super safety issue for the citizens of this community. And that's why we have to go forward with this get an outside entity, as Mr. McIntyre had expressed a moment ago. We can't have an in-house situation. We can't have people that were on the fire department previously because, again, how do we know that we've had an investigation that really is an investigation? So that's why we have this ordinance coming up and that we need to go forward on. I don't want to put the money out. We don't have the money to put out, but it's something that needs to be done to clear it up for the citizens of New Carolina. Again, anybody else like to say something before we go? I think, would you call for the vote, please? Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Very reluctant, yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. <clears throat> Passes seven to zero. Oh, I'd like to say something. Thank you so much for that. Again, it takes at least six votes on an emergency, so we had seven. Mr. Lowry, you'd like to say something, please? Now that it has passed, I, I hope you guys understand where we're coming from. And that, or at least for me, anyway, the yes vote is not because we don't trust you. I support the fire department 100%, and Chief, I, I think he's a great guy, and I think he's done a good job from what I've seen. I don't know the inner workings of a fire a firehouse. I'm not a fire, uh, fire, uh, fighter. Thank you. A firefighter. I couldn't get it out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that, that yes vote is, is, you know, like they have said, it's, it's a safety issue. And I, and I also think it, it's going to prove that you guys are the one that matters. And it's, it's going to prove some interesting facts. I think when it's all done and said, and you know what I'm talking about. Thank you again for all you do. We really appreciate it. There's no doubt about that. Anybody have anything else to say? Anybody out in the audience? Yes, sir. Could you go up to the podium, please? I'm sorry. Fine. I just had a question. My name's William Lindsay, 314 North Henry Street. How much is this going to cost the city that it already broke? First off, we don't know for sure how much it's going to cost. We're trying to definitely put a cap on it. Secondly, uh, it's going to have to come out of the fire department funds. That's where it's coming out of. It won't come out of the general fund because it's an investigation of the fire department. Okay. So once we know what the actual figure is, it'll be public record, and we'll be happy to put that out there at that time. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Yes, sir, Chief. Uh, one of your ordinances that will come up next time, I, I got this information right at the end of the day today. Uh, one of the ordinances regarding Medi-Cal is about an auto dialer. Um, the information I have can explain it better than I can explain it to you. I'll pass that out to you before we look. Thank you. And anybody? I appreciate all the support. Thank you, sir. Council, anybody else? Anything? Mr. Zambach. Move, we adjourn. Thank you. Very good.